Hello and welcome to our webinar entitled How to Combine Online and Offline Data to Deliver Smarter Security, Richer Experience, and More Insightful Marketing. My name is Sue Olson. I'm with Radiant Logic and I'll be your moderator for today's program. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that your lines will be muted for the duration of the webinar. However, if you have a question, you may enter it in the GoToWebinar window and we will have a Q&A session at the end if time allows. If we're not able to get to your question during the webcast, we'll send a personal email to follow up. Also, this webcast will be recorded and sent out along with a copy of the presentation slides within the next 24 hours. Our speakers today will be Suresh Sriharan and Wade Ellery. Suresh is responsible for product and technology strategy at Gigya. He's a product executive who has been in the identity and access management space for more than 10 years with companies such as Sun, Oracle, and Okta before joining Gigya. And Wade Ellery, Senior Solutions Architect with Radiant Logic. Wade has extensive experience in enterprise IT direct and channel software and services sales and management. He has in-depth knowledge and experience in enterprise IAM, IAG, risk and compliance, and IT security challenges. Suresh, we'll start with you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you know, hopefully you can see my screen, and I uh, really appreciate you taking the time today uh, to be with us. I know you have a choice of where you spend your time, and really appreciate you choosing to spend the time with uh, us here. So what we'll do is we'll quickly run through uh, what exactly are we seeing as market trends, specifically around customer identity and access management, and what is it that we are seeing from customers? What is it that uh, you know customers are trying to do in terms of digital transformation? Why this this is actually important, particularly to bring together online and offline data in order to serve up richer experiences. And the powerful integration that we actually have between us and Radiant Logic can actually deliver some of these solutions. And we'll also walk through a quick demo. And uh, between me and Wade, we'll uh, you know give you a picture of what the architecture would typically look like. So if you, if you look at the Gigia platform, there are three broad areas that we actually focus on. The first is uh, you know, the connect part of the platform, which is essentially the ability for users to register and the ability for users to sign. And think of this as the traditional provisioning of the user's pro you know, and self-registration process, where users go in and request or create accounts on various sites and digital properties. And there's a, you know, we simplify the barrier of actually logging in using, say, so a social login or, you know, using the help of biometrics and site login. And the idea here is that you want to be able to connect with your customers on an ongoing basis, either through various means of engagement, you know, things that they like on social media that you want to bring back and make it part of their experience as they are on the website. And Moreover, you know, as and when they spend more time on your site, you know, if you think of it, when you pop up a registration screen which has multiple different fields, it's extremely difficult for customers to kind of, you know, fill out those fields. It's a huge barrier to entry for you to recognize them and for them to kind of, uh, you know, make themselves known to you. So what we do is we actually provide the registration as a service component, which makes it easier for customers to register, easier for them to basically give you the basic information that is needed in order to you know, become a known user from an unknown user. And we then use that to, you know, various different degrees in order to personalize the experience with third party, uh, you know, programs that I'll talk about shortly. Now, once you collect the identity attributes from the user, it's all stored within our profile management identity store. And this is where we have capabilities such as preference management, and we actually have a bunch of hygiene, uh, you know, hygiene that we carry out in terms of normalizing the data. There's governance of the data in terms of who has access to it and so on. And that's basically the collect category of our platform. And once you've collected these user attributes, the identity attributes, we then pass it down to various third-party applications. And uh, you know, that's basically where initially you can start looking at gaining insights into this, this customer identity data on our platform. But when you want to personalize the experience or when you want to specifically kick off certain campaigns based on certain segments, that's really where you start leveraging the identity exchange in order to get rich experiences out to your customer. As you can see, this is a closed loop system where you actually connect with the users and actually collect that data, 
then use that in order to convert that into bed experiences. But in turn, all of that drives the connect phase as well. As you can see, it's a closed loop system. So <clears throat> how exactly do you go about connecting with customers? As I said, there's a very simple registration process that we've enabled. And we have various different SDKs that we provide our customers with. And with the help of these SDKs, whether it's in, you know, on the mobile using an Android or an iOS SDK or on the web using a JavaScript or PHP SDK, what you can do is you can actually start looking at what the customer journey is and tie in the registration and the login process into the customer journey so that you're basically lowering the barrier to entry for those customers to self-identify themselves. And the richness of the first party data that you get and the accuracy of the first party data that you get can then be used in multiple different ways as you integrate with the back-end marketing solutions. And of course, you know, with all of this comes the need for, uh, you know, improved data security. You also have the need for uh, proper storage of data and visibility of this data across uh, different systems. And as we think about registration, there's the other thing that goes hand in hand with it, which is the authentication of the user. So usernames, passwords, of course, are, you know, are, are there today and there's obviously the whole uh, concept of you know is this going to fade away and how much of it is going to go away and how quickly is it going to go away. So in order to prepare your platform for future authentication mechanisms we actually have a pretty straightforward uh, you know biometric authentication that we enable as well. So one of the key things of the you know registration process is the ability to progressively build the identity profile of the user. So if they've initially come in, you know, just pop up a registration screen that basically requires the minimum fees, but as they stay more and more on the website, you can probably ask them for certain other attributes like, you know, what's, you know, what's your gender or where exactly are you look, logging in from, things like that, that you can actually use subsequently to, you know, build up more, you know, information about the identity of the user and in addition to that also improve the experience of the user. So. We've seen customers' users across multiple different channels. You know, obviously the web and the mobile are pretty straightforward, but you know, we've also had customers who actually look at uh, you know various different kiosks and things that they may be authenticating themselves from. As you can imagine, you know, what you want is a very flexible authentication mechanism that's you know that you can actually push across multiple different channels. And across these channels, we want to be able to improve the experience of the user so that they can self-identify, register, and securely authenticate and let them into the system. So once you've you know, connected these users, you want to be able to collect the identity data. And obviously, identity data can come from multiple different sources. You know, you can get system data, which is, you know, things like location, timestamp, and IP address, and so on. You can get behavior data. Behavioral data could be things like, you know, the different clicks, page views, and so on. And it could also be first party information that customers have given you things like shares and likes and reviews and so on. And obviously the, you know, the richest part of the data is going to come from you know, the registration information that you give them. So the traditional registration screens that you can pop up and the progressive uh, registration that I, profiling that I actually mentioned, which is you know, as and when they are traversing the site or the property, property based on where they are, you can actually request specific information. And Along with this obviously comes in the opt-ins and the preferences and as you can imagine privacy is a very significant part of this. So the ability for the user to actually give them, give you data from you know first party sources is probably the richest but simultaneously you want to be able to make sure that that information is stored privately and securely and also as and when you move them downstream to different applications you want to be able to say what kind of data can actually be used and the customer should be able to identify what data they want to be able to, you know, they're willing to send down to downstream systems in order to, you know, improve the experience. And different, uh, you know, as you can imagine, different social networks based on where users are coming in from actually give you certain attributes. And obviously all of this is rich data, but it also is, you know, something that's not predictable because you don't know where the customers are going to come in from, what networks they're going to, social networks they could be logging in from, or are they going to log into your own website? And obviously the schema is very different, which means what you want is a pretty flexible schema interface, which is really critical in, uh, you know, enriching the experience of the user. So what does that mean? You know, when you store the identity data in our profile management data store, identity store, 
we actually support a you know, very flexible schema where you can actually start pulling in data based on the customer's experiences. You could potentially be asking for specific fields and so on, which means the kind of data that you get is unstructured. The field, the scheme, it could be coming in from multiple sources, and there's no real single schema that you can define, which means the real law, you know, advantage that you have with the platform is the fact that you actually have a flexible schema which will enable you to kind of uh, you know, tweak it as and when you get new data in, into the system. So once you've got the data, the identity attributes of the user, the key uh, you know, value here you want to bring is essentially within connecting to various downstream systems to deliver business value. And when we talk about delivering business value, we're basically talking about you know, connecting to multiple different downstream applications. Some of these could be used for you know, segmenting and email marketing. It could just be you know, data management platforms which will help enrich the, identity, the, enrich the experience of the user. Could be CMS. So what we actually have is out of the box about 50 different applications that we provide connectors to, which means not only can you, can, you know, collect these identity attributes from the user first party, but given the, the simple flexible mechanism by which we, with which we actually connect to downstream applications, you can actually deliver business value at a, in very quick time. So your time to market and time to value is pretty significant. And so tying it all together, the Giga platform, is, as I mentioned, is in three categories. One is the connect, collect, and the convert. And obviously from an access identity and access management perspective, we provide multiple different ways in which you can actually collect information, you know, the equivalent of a provisioning, if you will, which is the self-registration and the progressive profiling. We support multiple different social networks, so about 25 of them globally. So you can actually look at where the users are coming in from, and based on the location, you can present to them just the local social networks that are popular. So 25 different social networks. There's also the ability to you know, provide your own uh, login of screens and authenticate against uh, the gig data store, the uh, data store as well. And we support standard, uh, you know. So federation standards, which basically mean you give a seamless single sign-on experience, we support SAML too, and obviously that means that you can connect with multiple different partners that you have uh, downstream in order to pull data in uh, for the customer. We also support OpenID Connect and OAuth, which means that makes connectivity far simpler. It enables you to go to market with partners faster, and in order to and you know, enrich the customer's experience, we actually have a pretty robust uh, engagement platform. Obviously, things like you know, shares and likes and comments that you can pull into the identity attribute, but in addition to that, there's the whole loyalty, ability to connect to loyalty programs, and there's the gamification that we actually provide as well as, a, as an engine. And as I mentioned, all of this data is actually stored within our you know, identity management and identity profile management identity store. We provide the capability for you to run some analytics on it. There's the security associated with the data. There's uh, you know visibility of the data provided based on where you know the administrators are coming in from and so on. And finally, all of this data can then be pushed to downstream applications either using uh, identity exchange connectors or you can draw insight into the customer's uh, identity basically using our customer insights uh, tool. And the whole platform is actually built completely on REST APIs, which means you can actually plug in multiple different, you know, custom applications as well. With this, I'll hand it over to Wade. Excellent. Thank you very much. Let me share my screen here. There we go. And I appreciate uh, the introduction. Suresh, you did an excellent job of, of queuing up uh, the value of the Gigia product and the ability to bring in uh, that rich user profile from the outside world. So what I'll touch on now is the offline data uh, component in this model and explain how with Radiant Logic and Gigia working together, you can really have a multiplicative effect of leveraging both online and offline data to build that richer security uh, experience and a more insightful marketing and a better customer experience. Okay, there we go. So the key here is being able to not only, is, as Suresh explained, connect to all the sources of identity that are outside the organization, but within the organization itself, within the company that is uh, servicing these particular customers, is a tremendous amount of information about that customer and that customer relationship to that company. 
And that information is more than likely buried in multiple siloed systems. It could be in a CRM system, a customer management system. It could be inside a purchasing and ERP system. It could be data stored in any number of sources internally. And that data may not even be necessarily in formats and in protocols, again, that are easily aggregated and brought together. So the value here of Radiant Logic is the ability to go back to those back-end sources that are internal to the organization, pull that information together, extract, model, and load that data into our Radiant Logic store, and make that information then available to Gigya to integrate along with the information that Gigya is collecting from online sources to further enrich that profile. The end goal here is that the user experience becomes more fulfilling, more information is provided to them at their fingertips, more information is available, and less data needs to be collected from the end user. And if they have provided information once, we go get that information and reuse it. We don't ask the customer to fill out the same information over and over again. And this has a real impact on the overall customer interaction and makes it easier for them to continue to do business with the organization and to potentially expand the exposures they have to opportunities for other services or other products because now the profile can be actually leveraged and managed in a way that provides that information to the user. So what's really the, the quintessential model behind this? What, what is driving this? And Really what we've seen is our own customers, and, and Gig is, is verified this against their market, is they're being driven now to improve the customer experience, to really uh, bring the customer into a digital transformation. You see a lot of companies now having uh, digital projects internally around the idea of managing the customer's interactions as the customer comes to the company. Traditionally, we used to go into brick and mortar stores. We used to be visited by salespeople. We used to interact with people over the phone if we wanted to do something or go down to the Sears catalog store. But now, a large portion of the interaction with organizations, and some organizations' complete interaction, is done over the internet. It's done through my mobile device. It's done through a browser on my machine. It's done through my television. All these interactions now require a completely different paradigm for driving that model. So you want to be able to do things like make registration and, and access simple and easy. Leverage things people have already done. You need a rich and complete profile for that user. And you need to be able to authenticate that user based on uh, information that you have internally and then authorize that user's access to additional data within the profile that they have so you can enhance that user experience. And again, the value Giga brings to the table is there's a tremendous amount of data out there in the online world that will help you enhance that user profile. Collect sources like Facebook and LinkedIn and other places where you can get interests and likes and location data and educational information. All that builds a richer user profile. And internally, that same kind of information, what purchases have you already made, what sales people have you worked with, what is your information for shipping and regional data? Um, if you're in Michigan and it's February, we may want to promote to you uh, snow shovels and galoshes. But if you're in Florida and it's February, then maybe it's something completely different that you need. Um, so being able to understand that information and leverage that is important to the process. The challenge is, though, that those sources of information are scattered within the organization. They were originally uh, populated in systems that themselves were on little islands or siloed. Um, the life insurance system was built around the idea of selling life insurance, but the fire insurance system was a completely separate product. The auto insurance was acquired when they bought that auto insurance company. So now you have an insurance company with three separate platforms that don't talk to each other, that don't even necessarily identify the user with the same name. So how do you build a global profile for that user of information if you can't even connect that information together? And this is where Radian Logic comes into play, is the ability to take that scattered information and really leverage that and pull it together into a global profile. But the underlying challenge is that when you're joining information together, when you're looking up someone in one system and looking them up on a second system and then finding out where that user exists in both places and bringing that information together as a single response, 
you add time, you add overhead, you add expense, as we say in the IT business, to that transaction. And if everyone remembers the launch of uh, the original healthcare.gov site, people were waiting hours or you know, 15, 20, 16 minutes and longer or timing out their sessions just to load their data into the platform because that system on the back end was making a lot of queries to a lot of back end platforms in real time and trying to bring that information together. That really becomes an untenable system. Now, if you're optimizing your environment for customer experience, you don't want to introduce a tremendous amount of weight. Uh, a study done by one of the large software companies said you have about 230 milliseconds before a user starts to become frustrated when he's waiting for something to happen on his screen. And you can probably yourselves realize that is the last time you watched the wheel spin while you were trying to get into your banking uh, application or trying to do something online, that immediate sort of feeling of I shouldn't be waiting here. Now for those of you with, with a math phobia, I'm, I'm, I apologize for bringing up any, any trauma from the, your high school algebra class when you saw this curve before, but what this illustrates is that as you try and build a richer and richer profile, the cost and time for that goes up dramatically. And the challenge is it's an exponential curve. It's not just double when I uh, add another system. It actually is, is a uh, exponential growth. So that curve becomes untenable. You can't climb this steep a, a cost curve to, de to deliver the richness that you really want to put into play. But you've got competitors out there who had the advantage of a greenfield environment. They were able to build their environment from scratch, put everything in one model, and now they're producing this at the speed of a directory. And you're stuck in this siloed model you can't bring together. So you really need to have a solution that can address that for the internal system. And this is where Radiant Logic comes into play. Not only can we connect to those back ends and join them together and build that richer profile, but in doing that, we can understand relationship. And this is key to the customer experience. It's understanding how a lead relates to a prospect that turns into an opportunity that then becomes a customer. Things travel through a life cycle or a workflow, or they have connectivity in them that provides more value to the customer and provides you with a richer experience, which is key to the environment that we're trying to create for that customer. So the ability to actually understand the relationship that exists between a number of points in a, in a data system, all the information I know about you, how are your orders related to your salesperson, related to your last sale, which may be related to information I have from your online persona about the fact that you have a lot of likes on your Facebook around camping. All that information needs to be able to be brought together. But you can't just draw a single line and say that's the only relationship because the reality of it is our customers have multiple relationships with us. They interact with us in many different ways. So you end up with this tree with multiple paths running through it that, can, that represents all the different ways that the customer or my customers may interact with me and my information and my data. Um, a simple model is if you think of a, of a, a medical interaction, between a doctor and a patient who prescribes a, a particular drug that's fulfilled at a pharmacy that's paid for by an insurance company. That's a linear relationship. You can go right down that chain and see how the information flows. But what if you're the insurance company? You want to know, as an insurance company, what drugs are being prescribed by what doctors for what patients fulfilled at which pharmacies. Same information, completely different angle of looking at that data. So by being able to turn that information around and create new context and new relationships, I can add value to that information. I can give marketing information in a way that is relevant for them. At the same time, I can give the customer data in a way that implements or, or affects their experience and makes it more positive. And at the same time, I can give the information to sales in a way that they find useful. All different constituencies, all different requirements, all the same data, but the ability to provide that context dynamically is what's critical. So what you need to be able to do to, to provide that end result is, as you see in the Radiant Logic product here, on the left-hand side, connect to multiple sources of identity. And again, as, as Gigi pointed out, these sources out there in the world have different schemas, they have different protocols, they have different structures, they all act 
differently, and they were not designed necessarily to talk to each other. So you have to have a platform that can connect to standards-based solutions and bring that data into play. And then you integrate that profile together. You understand that Jay Smith and these two systems is the same person, but Jay Smith here and Jay Smith over there is actually a different person. So you build that profile using advanced logic and, and power within the system to make that global profile, and then take that information, filter it, transform it, and translate it into the exact view, the exact context and format and protocol that the application consuming that needs to be able to, to take in. And then push that information over to Gigya. And Gigya can model that information together with online data, and as you saw earlier, then make that available to a myriad of systems now that can leverage that data for marketing, for sales enhancement, for auditing, for customer analysis, for all the different functions that are out there where that kind of data becomes more and more critical. And if you see the move in the market space now, there's whole companies out there that are built around the concept of collecting information about people and how they interact with the companies they work with and providing that information back to them. Here you get to mine not only what happens in the online world, but you also get to mine your own internal data on the back end. But again, the critical piece here is how do I get square pegs into a round hole? And that's where Radiologic steps in. That's where we're able to do this connection to the back end, bring the data in, retain the format and the structure of that data so you don't lose that valuable information. An individual data point, a, a this product was purchased, and that alone has very little value but this product was purchased by this person through this salesman at this time shipped to this address, that has value. And the more you can maintain that relationship, the more you can make this information even more valuable. So the key here is in the Radiant Logic product is a real combination of two functions. Our integration layer is you'll see in our illustration this blue sphere. This is the really powerful logic engine within Radiant Logic that allows you to understand different protocols and different schemas on the back end, be able to understand relationship and context, to be able to join information together and build that richer relationship and make that global profile that you need to be able to provide that information. And then leverage that with dynamic groups, support attribute-based access control, do a lot of things here that give you benefits of leveraging that data over and over again, whether it's for access management, authorization, enhanced user experience, marketing, sales, all that data, again, brought together in that logical engine can be leveraged for multiple purposes. And again, we can create views of that data that are specific to the application that needs to consume it. But the key here is, is that logical engine, as you saw before, that work is what we call expensive in IT. It takes time, it takes resources, you got to run it all in memory, you got to run it on giant processors if you wanted to have it in what we call near real time. With Radian Logic, we realized that challenge and we looked at the big data world to say, well, how is big data managing large amounts of information, moving that information, uh, analyzing it, correlating it, storing it? And what we got was a uh, what we call HDAP, which is our highly available LDAP directory built on big data technology. And the key here is that we have integrated Lucene and Zookeeper and other Apache Hadoop big data technologies to optimize this store to be highly available, highly scalable, and not susceptible to the challenges of a traditional directory where you have contention and the more users you have, the actual less performance you get even when you add additional nodes to a cluster. We've optimized this now so that we can provide this information stored locally on our HDAP store, build that relationship, and then get it back to you at the speed of a directory. So not only can you authenticate and authorize the user, but I can pull back that full rich user context instantly to the application that's requiring it. Instead of overnight reports to analyze my relationships with my customers and their data, I can push this information back in near real time to the web portal and have that then decide how it's going to present information to the end user and create that real-time experience that everyone's looking for. So it's key here that both these components play together. The logic engine builds all the structure and 
views and formation of the data and brings it all together, the HSAP store optimizes that information for delivery so you can provide it in a way that the customer experience is enhanced both with content and with speed. And that's done off of a, a clustered environment here where we have multiple servers running simultaneously. One of the key factors is between these nodes we're actually doing replication at the block level and that's important because traditional LDAP directories compete against access requests to keep themselves synchronized. We've eliminated that competition. So that curve you saw, that steep exponential curve of effort has been flattened out. So we actually have performance graphs that will show you how much we've been able to flatten that curve out and, and build out the environment. And then managing configuration and synchronization of data here, this is a system that is self-healing, it's highly available, it, it does a tremendous amount of work in managing the, the context of the configurations and the user data, so it can be run in a enterprise uh, level and we have customers in the uh, millions, tens of millions and even larger environments running this technology today. So going back to that logic engine there, the, the key piece here is being able to correlate that identity. And as you saw earlier when, when Gigi was bringing in identity information from all the um, identity sources externally, it had a little bit of an advantage because it was querying those based on how it knew that user and where that user information was, was found in, in a common identifier. The challenges we have on back-end data, because things are much more siloed, um, and because we have uh, systems where I may have created users with completely different standards, as you can see, I can have uh, identity collision here where the same person with a different identity may not be brought together, a different identifier, or two identifiers that are the same on different systems may actually be different people. So I need to be able to address that ability, and that's something that Radiant Logic can provide as a capability of, of what we call disambiguating users, being able to make sure that the right users are, are created and, and aggregated properly. But also being able to do this across multiple different protocols and multiple different standards. Uh, not everyone's in a directory. Most customer information is in databases, but more and more now we're seeing customer information up in the cloud. We're seeing more and more data for our employees and contractors and vendors and for their customers being hosted on different platforms in the cloud. You may have success factors managing your internal uh, HR system. You may have Workday. You may have Salesforce. All that information now needs to be able to be brought together and correlated together. And Radiant Logic gives you a common platform to do that. At the same time, though, of letting you build the context, as you see on the right hand of the slide, where I can understand the relationships from a person to the product to the orders that they place within the system. And I can do that across all the people in my organization. So what I've done here is brought all this information together and built a global profile. And this is the key to the value proposition within Radiant Logic is I now have a single place to go to find all the information I need and I have available about my particular customer and make that information available to systems like Gigia to consume that, to provide it to other platforms that are going to be optimizing their performance based on a richer data profile. And I can modify this as I need to. As I gain additional access to more platforms that have user information in them, I can integrate them into this global profile. It's not a static system I build once and have to live with. It's very flexible, very malleable. I can bring in and extend schema with more data attributes. I can bring in new constituencies. I buy another company and I bring their consumers into my environment. I can build this profile out and expand it both on a number of sources and a number of attributes, and I can create different ways of consuming the data as, at will as I need to. So what I'd like to do right now is step into just a quick demo uh, and just give you an idea of what it would look like or what it can look like when Radiant Logic is integrated into the platform and you're able to collect information here and use that information to uh, modify or to enhance a user experience. So if I can get this to start, what we have here is Adventure Store. Adventure Store is an online uh, outdoor equipment sales organization. Um, they specialize in uh, more high-end uh, hiking and outdoor equipment. They look towards the extreme sports person, the mountain climber, the uh, person who really spends their weekends uh, under the stars. 
And uh, if I come to this site and I want to be able to access it, I'm going to come in and be asked to register. As we saw earlier with, with the Gigi interface, I can set up a simple registration here, create my user ID, set up my password, subscribe to the newsletter, agree to terms and conditions, and then basically submit that information. And that starts to build my profile within uh, Adventure Store. But I've already done some work with Adventure Store before. So although I'm registering on their website for the first time, Radiant Logic is able to recognize through the feed from Gigya. Here is a uh, John Appleseed, and he's come to the site. Now, John has actually interacted with us four times in the past. He used to buy out of our catalog. He's come into the store. He's had things shipped over the phone. And I have multiple records for John. So I want to let him go ahead and select the one that he wants to use now. Where is John living today? And if you look at my particular profile, some organizations, you'd see I have four addresses, but I've moved a bunch. So now John's able to go ahead and select the profile that he wants to be able to use. And this information is now available and identified as belonging to John and his primary shipping address. But it doesn't need to be limited to just this information. There may be a lot more information that we're cultivating from the back end system in terms of profile information about John, uh, location, uh, other information about him that would be used in the, to build this richer profile for him, and integrating that into information uh, from him from his social site. So there may be information from the Giga feed that you want to apply here. But in addition, I have the ability now, because I know John, to link back to his existing purchases with us. So I can give John one place to go again to see the salespeople that he interacted with in our organization. And again, these may have been completely different interactions over the phone, the catalog, in the store. And those back-end systems may not even talk to each other. But with Radiant Logic, I'm able to pull that information together, provide a single interface for John. So he can now look and see at all his historical interactions with us and drill down into the information so he can see the details of the particular information that he wants. So I see here that John is, is bought a lot of very high-end camping gear. He's bought a couple different sleeping bags. I get from his social profile that he is in a uh, relationship. So I may use that information now to tailor what I do with John. There may be uh, transactions in here that are done at certain times of the year, or I'm, he's buying really cold weather equipment. So as I get into the fall, I'm going to interact with John with different information. Now, once John has uh, registered the first time, when he comes back now to Adventure Store and logs in, all the information that he has provided to us and the selections that he's made, in addition to the data that we've already collected for him, is available now in John's profile. So once he logs onto the site a second time, we're going to be able to give John that seamless experience that we're looking for and not ask him for information a second time or a third time, but be able to let him move forward uh, without any impediment to him doing additional uh, work or effort within the site, hopefully buying more product, looking at new things, and potentially, again, customizing the experience for him based on uh, not just the selection he made for his shipping profile here, but I have other data I've collected off of his uh, online profile that I can use to influence what's displayed here. So his welcome page and profile uh, in, is enhanced with, you bought this, you may like this. Or um, we're in a special sale, buy one, get one free, because I know he's in a relationship, and that might be something that he would be interested in doing. All the different things I can do in that model, if I have that kind of information at hand, and here, again, allowing him to drill back down into his, into his uh, previous orders and be able to see the data that he has uh, established with us. So again, a key function here is that integration of information so that his experience is uh, as simple as possible, capturing information that's provided by him, giving him the ability to customize his experience as he goes through, and then remembering those choices so that the next time he comes through, if I've asked him to do something, I actually leverage what he's done and make that information available uh, again. So what I'd like to do is pass the uh, control back to Suresh uh, and have him just sort of uh, go over a couple of use cases that kind of outline specifically for customers how this is working in the real world. Sure. So, hey, thanks, Wade. Uh, so here's, here's the interesting thing, right? When 
when we was talking about how you can actually bring in data from external from internal sources what you're essentially doing is you're taking the exact same story that we had before but making it multiple times more powerful because what you can now do is actually give context to the customer's experience you know the context basically being you know things like past purchases when did the person call in for support for example things around the CRM data that we're going to get that we get from Radiant Logic so all of a sudden not only are you basically making the customer experience personalized you're actually making it far more relevant because what you're getting is the context of the past interactions of the customer with you as an organization with their current interests or likes or you know things that they get through say a social uh, login or what they provide you first party on their on your site itself you can combine all of this and actually make it a really rich powerful contextual experience that you know that's really going to be beneficial in fact we have a couple of our customers who are doing uh, this today and uh, what what you know let's take american cancer society one of the things that they want to be able to do is they want to be able to go and understand their donors better they want to be able to say hey if you donated something yesterday and you're at a charity run this morning for example they want to be able to you know at least go up to you and say hey thank you thanks for doing what you did yesterday right so in order to do that as you can imagine there is the ability or you know the, the power for you know them to basically have customers log in register on the website and can conduct the transaction on the website but it's also important to know that the same person is actually at the run for example and that data could be in a completely different you know database or you know an internal store a completely managed by an internal application so what they are trying to do is essentially they're basically bringing all of this data together and in order to get a complete view of the customer, in order to make the experience of the customer pretty you know, rich, personalized, interesting, and engaging, the other such customer that you know that we work with is a com you know is, a, is basically a mall operator in Europe called Unibail, and they have a very very cool application which basically you know once you you know once you registered your vehicle, you can drive into a parking garage in the mall, for example. And exactly where you parked is something that they pass back, and they actually, in, you know, once they've figured out exactly where you parked, they also lead you into the nearest entrance into the mall, and start pushing in contextual information about your, you know, about the different offers in the mall and so on. But the interesting thing is, they are, you know, they're basically integrating with multiple internal applications as well in order to make the customer's experience rich. It's not just that, hey, you're entering the mall here, and here are the nearest stores. Let me push some you know, coupons to you, for example. It's not as clean as that, but it's actually trying to make sense of who's this customer, what exactly are their current interests, you know, have, they, have we had past interactions with them, and trying to make the whole experience richer. So kind of uh, you know, making the, uh, the whole platform include internal and external data make the data far more richer and the, the experience more personalized for the user. So that will turn it back to Wade and uh, you know, we'll take it from there. Excellent, Suresh. Thank you very much. Um, we actually have some questions that have come in. And what I'd like to do is read through those now so we can answer them online and give everyone a chance to hear the questions and the answers. Um, first one, Suresh, is actually for you. Um, what kind of applications do you typically connect with once you have collected consumer data? Yeah, typically the what we've seen customers connect to are backend systems, which could be ESPs, they could be data management platforms, they could be CMS solutions. Most of them happen to be, you know, used for segmentation of the customers in order to figure out what kind of offers can I actually pass back to the customers and so on. The others are personalization engines, which means that depending on the digital property that the user is coming from, the channel the user is coming from in order to enrich the experience. So invariably we basically see customers kind of integrate with these kind of backend systems to you know, enhance experience, to personalize the experience, to segment their customers. And at the end of the day, it's more to look at, can I actually realize the lifetime value of the customer by knowing them better and by engaging with them better? Excellent. All right, and then we have another question here. Um, is the data that Radiant Logic aggregates limited to user identity data? Uh, that's an excellent question. And in fact, no, it's not 
limited to identity data. Primarily, um, a lot of the use cases for our internal uh, uses and our customers is for authentication, authorization around identity-centric data. But what we're talking about here is really expanding that information outward. And, and where you find value is the value or the ability to build context between identity information and other sources of data. So if you look at the Internet of Things, if I've got a refrigerator in my house that knows it needs a new water filter, that has a value when General Electric knows that refrigerator belongs to me and where I live and that I have a credit card on file with an automatic reorder information. So although that's not identity information about me per se, my refrigerator doesn't define me, um, it is information that relates to me. So the ability to relate that context together enhances, again, the user experience and gives the company opportunities to do more. So yes, there is a, a much richer uh, master data management model out there that benefits from this kind of connectivity and this kind of, uh, of usage. Another one for you, uh, Suresh, uh, do you see customers in uh, IAM solutions separate from IAM solutions for employees? Yes, and in fact, interestingly, uh, what we are seeing is that you know most of the IAM solutions that we have today, the traditional ones, have been built with the employee in mind. You know, there is a single source of truth. You, you know, invariably happens to be some kind of a directory or, in, you know, supposed to be a HR database. But there is a source of truth. But when you start looking at customer identity, there's no real source of truth. You know, customers can come in from anywhere. The second thing is the way the customers authenticate and the way users, employees authenticate. Still, you know, yes, there is username and password, but the reality is customers can choose any device that they want to come in from, any browser, any platform. And with applications that you basically have for employees, you can actually mandate. You know, IT has the ability to kind of say, you know, here's exactly what we will support. If it's outside of this, we won't support it. That's, you know, that's the other thing. The third thing is in terms of scope and scale, right? The scale of, you know, employee identity goes into maybe a few, you know, few hundred thousands, you know, rarely sometimes millions. And if it's used in the same platform as used for managing customers, it's invariably just for, you know, authentication purposes. It's not to drive personal experiences. It's not for IoT use cases, as you mentioned. It's hard to kind of adapt those. But if you think about a customer IAM solution, it's kind of architected primarily for scope and scale. So essentially, the scope is the user experience. It's basically in you know keeping the end customer in mind, the scale is usually in millions because you you know very rarely do you actually have systems that are architected for you know just a few hundred thousand users. It's usually run it runs into millions, and obviously the third very important thing is you know the kind of data that you're getting, the the velocity and the variety of data that you get. Right? It's very different with customer and with uh, employee identity because you have fixed schemas. You know, they do change, but not as often as you would, depending on the kind of sources that you get it from for customer IAM. But the underlying fact is the standards are already there. You know, why would you want to reinvent the wheel with, you know, say something new other than OpenID Connect or OAuth or SAML? Those standards are there. How you use those standards to personalize the experience, and how do you, you know, what kind of end systems you connect to, you know, as opposed to ERP and HR and so on. Here you're connecting with personalization engines, with content management systems, with data management platforms. As you can imagine, the standards, we leverage the same standards that have evolved and that have proven themselves, but in a very different way. So we do definitely see these as uh, you know, being two separate systems. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, we're, we're seeing something very similar. Uh, and in a lot of organizations, also, two, two systems run by two different parts of the organization. Uh, the internal IT people a lot of times are responsible for the employee side of the environment. And the customer side may be something that was uh, started up and managed within a marketing group or a sales group or that, that side of the organization didn't really think of it as an IT function initially because a lot of customer interaction wasn't IT based. It wasn't digital. And, and you're seeing either uh, two separate organizations trying to understand how to work together or how do I take advantage of lessons learned by the other organization uh, in the way that they built and scaled their solution? What can I do on my side? Yeah. Um, a follow-on question to that here that came up is, is can I leverage HDAP as my store for customer data? 
and as Suresh was just talking about, in customer data, you're, you're talking about a large amount of users, uh, millions, tens of millions, a hundred of million uh, endpoint users, and then potentially an even richer set of attributes for that. And that is really what uh, HDAP, our um, highly available LDAP store inside Radiant Logic, is optimized for. We built it specifically around the understanding that our customers were starting to expand past the scope of the 100,000, 300,000 employees into the millions of users, and they needed something that was highly available, highly scalable, and highly performant, and that's what we've delivered with that platform. So definitely ready for customer data. Uh, another question here, uh, what is the integration with Workday and ServiceNow as more customers are going to SaaS? That's an excellent question, and what we're seeing with SaaS applications, first of all, what a lot of our customers are starting to realize is that as they uh, use more and more applications in the cloud, as they create more uh, SaaS application functionality for their customers or for their end users, and we have customers who actually um, provide a service, and in that service they incorporate other third-party SaaS applications as add-ons, so it's sort of a chain of, uh, of services in the cloud. And what we see is, uh, what they're realizing is they're creating another island or another silo of identity. You create an identity inside your success factors system. You create an identity inside Workday as an HR record. You create an identity inside Salesforce. And these are now identities that you have to manage, but they're far more disconnected than the identities that you have on premise. So the first thing is being able to connect to those sources of identity and bring that information into Radiant Logic so you have a way to view that data, have a way to correlate that with your existing user identity so that my Salesforce and my ServiceNow and my SuccessFactors profile extends my user's AD and LDAP profiles and my information coming out of my security database so I have a much richer context there. Now I can start to leverage things like roles I have in Salesforce to provide authenticate or authorization decisions to access certain applications within my on-premise or other SaaS applications. So the information that I've invested in populating in those systems is available for that. The other piece is the ability to actually provision or push updates back to those systems. One of the things we see very commonly in Workday is that Workday is a source of truth for users coming in the organization, and they come down, and that then generates the creation of local on-premise accounts for that, like an Active Directory or other systems that need local accounts. But then the system wants to turn around and push the email address that's generated on-premise back up into the record into Workday. So you see a flow of information going in both directions, and it's important, again, that you understand that context, and you can understand where to put that information back. And then when someone leaves the organization or their role changes, that has to ripple through. So you have to have that communication between the cloud applications and on-premise. One really interesting use case that a customer uh, came up with was they had all their customers already in their Salesforce CRM system. But those Salesforce records were just records. They weren't necessarily an identity that the user could use to authenticate against to authorize access to uh, their customer portal. But they didn't want customers to have to re-register because they already had the data. So we were able to pull the customer information down from Salesforce, bring it into Radiant Logic, in the HDAP store, generate a user password field, populate that with a default password, and then link that to the Salesforce record. So now my Salesforce record is a user ID and a password uh, record that I can use for authorization to or authentication to let my user into the portal and then authorize the view or the experience they have based on the information I have in Salesforce. So they were able to take tens of thousands of customers and immediately enable them to access their new customer portal without a re-registration process simply by, by having them set their password when they arrived after they verified their credentials. So that's another way to leverage that information that you're generating off-site uh, on an on-site basis. Um, what is this, what, let's see, source of truth is what? What if the master identity store is compromised? Um, well, source of truth is, is 
really in the eye of the beholder, a lot of organizations, there's different sources of truths for different things. Um, it may be uh, a CRM platform for customers. That's the one record that everything gets updated back to. Um, internally, it may be HR for employees, but it may be a third-party SaaS uh, outsourcing system for contractors. So the source of truth is really sort of the origin uh, where information comes into the system. It may be enhanced and combined with other data before it is actually uh, pushed to an endpoint application. Now, what if the master identity store is compromised? Um, that's a challenge within the, the industry, and we're seeing more and more of that now. I think I got an email from LinkedIn last night letting me know uh, that in 2012 they were compromised, and they're seeing the ripples of that now as identities are being sold. So it's key that you secure the environment, that you have good backups for your information, that you have, you've implemented uh, measures to make sure that privileged accounts that have access to that data are tightly managed. And this is one of the advantages of Radiant Logic is that you can build that full global profile so you can see all the places someone has access, someone has authorization to certain systems and platforms, and how that relates back to other information you know about them so you can do more effective auditing and compliance. And also, too, when you're talking about going to the cloud, you're provisioning users into the cloud, you're giving people administrative or supervisory or director rights in applications in the cloud, and you may not be able to see those or hold those in a context where you can understand who that person is and how it relates to their management functions and was that a role that's still relevant for them. Again, with Radiant Logic, being able to pull that information into one global profile lets your auditors and your compliance group manage that information much more tightly. And that's really the key, um, is making sure that you don't get compromised. If you do get compromised, um, there's a whole bunch of organizations out there built around recovery of that, and, uh, and that's sort of out of the scope of what we're, we're doing. We're going to keep the door closed and keep the horses in the barn if we can. Uh, we got time for one more question. Let's see if I've got... If I, wait, if I may add to what you said, sure thing. Right, really around the source of truth. In, in the case of customer identities, the, you know, unlike a HR system for employees, there is no real single source of truth, as you mentioned. It's basically you know, the channel through which the user comes in and what data you get from that channel. And what we are seeing, at least from a customer IM perspective, is that identity attributes get stored, say, on the Giga platform, for example, the profile management uh, you know, data store, identity store. And we have layers and layers of security in terms of you know, storage of the data, who has access to it, and there's multiple layers of security around you know, and access controls around that. And there's also you know, the barriers that you put in, multi-factor authentication that you actually provide for administrators. And in addition to all of this, you know, the facility where the data itself is stored is also pretty, you know, is also has its own standards and you know, basically have secu security. So I think the, the point is that there is no single source of truth for customer data, but there are multiple ways in which you can securely store it. And yes, you know, there is always this chance in security that something may get compromised. Excellent. That was very good. Thank you. And we're at the top of the hour now, so what I'll do is go ahead and, and uh, wrap up our webinar uh, for this week and appreciate everyone for your time, your questions, and your attention. Thank you very much, Suresh, for your uh, sharing with us the Giga platform and uh, how that and Radiant Logic working together can really optimize your online and offline data. We'll also have another webinar in two weeks uh, where we'll be highlighting the integration with Radiant Logic and CA's. API gateway uh, management platform, so you can optimize API gateway in your on-premise environment through Radiant Logic and CA. Thank you very much. I hope everyone has a wonderful uh, rest of your day, and have a great uh, weekend. Thank you. Bye.